Hello, I'm Eddie Parker, and welcome to another episode of Gulf Coaster Connections. Today is Saturday, August 3rd, 2024, and we're here at Globe Life Field to see the Texas Rangers play the Boston Red Sox. It's 99 degrees outside, hotter than Hades, so what are we waiting for? Let's go inside and get some AC. We'd like you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the Texas hospitality of all of the Rangers. During the next game, support your Rangers with a lot of noise. Ranger fans, welcome all to Blow Light Field. Well, we got out of the heat inside, now we're getting some ice cream. Bluebell ice cream, the best ice cream in the country. Out of Brenham, Texas. So we have some Dr. Pepper flavored ice cream in one of the Texas Ranger hats. Uh, these are not available anymore in a lot of the ballparks, so it's kind of cool that they're here in this park. Texas flag made completely out of baseballs. Let's take a look around the rest of the first level. Boston Red Sox batting practice. The Texas Rangers were founded as the Washington Senators in 1961, an expansion team awarded to Washington, D.C. after its previous Senators team became the Minnesota Twins. The new Senators relocated to Arlington, Texas after the 1971 season and debuted as the Texas Rangers the following spring. The Rangers' first home was at Arlington Stadium. Arlington Stadium was often the hottest stadium in the major leagues, with temperatures frequently topping over 100 degrees throughout the summer. So the Rangers begin playing most of their weekend games between May and September at night, a tradition that continues for years. Nolan Ryan, the Ryan Express. Over his 27-year playing career in the Major League Baseball, he pitched for the New York Mets, the California Angels, the Houston Astros, and the Texas Rangers. Ryan consistently threw pitches that were clocked over 100 miles per hour. He maintained this philosophy throughout his playing career, being known as one of the top pitchers in Major League Baseball into his mid-40s. Ryan signed with the Texas Rangers in 1988 at the age of 42. In 1989, he went 16 for 10 and led the league with 301 strikeouts. On August 22nd of that year, Ryan struck out Ricky Henderson, becoming the only pitcher to record 5,000 career strikeouts. On May 1, 1991, at the age of 44, Ryan extended his record by throwing his seventh no-hitter of his career. He was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1999 and is widely considered to be one of the greatest Major League Baseball pitchers of all time. The team moved here to Globe Life Field in 1994. It is also an open air stadium, so it too felt the oppressive heat that settles over Texas in summer during baseball season. The temperatures here reached in excess of 110 degrees on the field. My clear memory of watching a game at the ballpark at Arlington was the intense heat of an August night game and being bombarded by a large swarm of grasshoppers. Not exactly a fun night at the ballpark. Ivan Pudge Rodriguez is widely regarded as one of the greatest catchers in Major League Baseball. He played for the Texas Rangers in two separate stints, comprising the majority of his career. He played in the All-Star Games 14 times, won a World Series in 2003 with the Florida Marlins, and is a 13-time Golden Glover, a 7-time Silver Slugger, his number seven is retired by the Texas Rangers, and he entered the Baseball's Hall of Fame in 2017. Remember that Domino Sugar Factory back in the last episode? A lot of that sugar goes up the Mississippi River to the Jack Daniels Distillery. Adrian Beltre is regarded as one of the greatest third basemen of all time. On January 5th, 2011, Beltre signed a five-year, $80 million contract with the Texas Rangers. He played with the Rangers for eight years until his retirement from baseball in 2018. Beltre's statistics improved when he was in his 30s. While he had previously played in ballparks in Los Angeles and Seattle that are known for being unfavorable to hitters, the Ranger ballpark was known as a hitter-friendly environment. The Wall Street Journal described Beltre's Rangers tenure as nothing short of brilliant. 
His number 27 is retired by the Texas Rangers, and he was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 2024. On May 20th, 2016, the Rangers announced that they would vacate Globe Life Park. The new stadium was to be constructed in a public-private partnership and have a retractable roof. The ballpark was approved on by the voters on the following election day. On July 24, 2020, the Rangers hosted their first regular season game against the Colorado Rockies, which they won one to nothing. The Texas Rangers have won three American League championships. They defeated the New York Yankees four games to two to clinch their first in 2010. The next year, they repeated defeating the Detroit Tigers again four games to two. In 2023, the Rangers beat their in-state rivals, the Houston Astros, four games to three to advance to their first World Series championship, where they defeated the Arizona Diamondbacks in four games to one. During the 2023 regular season, the Texas Rangers were led by an AL best offense in runs scored and were tied with the Minnesota Twins in home runs. The Rangers led the AL at the All-Star Game with six players. Despite leading the AL West for most of the season, poor play late in the year saw the team finish second in the division behind the Houston Astros. The teams had identical win-loss records, but Houston owned a better head-to-head -head record. The Rangers qualified for the postseason as the fifth wildcard entry in the American League just two years removed from 102 lost seasons. In the wild card series, they swept the four-seeded Tampa Bay Rays. In the division series, they swept the American League East division winner and top seed Baltimore Orioles. Texas came into the season with a 50 to one betting odds, which was tied for the seventh longest odds to make a World Series since 1985. The 2024 MLB All-Star Game was played right here in Globe Field on July 16th. In the top of the third inning, Shoei Otane hit a three-run home run off my beloved Red Sox pitcher, Tana Hawk, leading off the National League at 3-0. But the star of the show was Boston's own Jaron Duran, who hit the game-winning two-run home run to give the American League their first lead at 5-3. Duran went on to win the 2024 All-Star Game Most Valuable Player Award, the fifth in Boston Red Sox history. Well, with this accent, you know I'm not from Boston. So how did I become a Red Sox fan? Kind of a long story. My grandfather played minor league baseball in the old Texas leagues back in the 1920s. During World War II, he moved to Dallas to uh, work at Chance Vault, building the courts there. In the late 50s and early 60s, he was a die-hard fan for the Fort Worth Dallas Minor League Rangers. He never lived to see the Rangers come to the Metroplex in 1972, but my father used to take me out to the old Arlington Stadium where we sat in the aluminum seats in the hottest part of summer. That was the first place I've ever ate a nacho or a jalapeno, and I've been a fan ever since. Now, my wife's grandfather's from Gardner, Massachusetts, and he was an old World War II vet. He served in Patton's Third Army during the war. And uh, in 1994, when the Red Sox were making their first World Series drive, I became a fan because of him, and I've been a Red Sox fan ever since. I love the fan base, the fans, Fenway Park, Boston. I can't wait to go again, but honestly, if the Rangers win tonight, I'm not going to be broken hearted. After all, being a Ranger fan runs in my family too. I just hope it's a great game. So let's play ball, y'all. Globe Life Field is a pretty park. So I'm in section 224, row 4, seat 12, right on the first base side. I can look right down into the Boston Red Sox dugout, see all the action. And I just want to say here, I am so glad they finally brought Texas Ranger baseball inside. It used to be so hot in those old ballparks. Have you ever witnessed the energy and excitement of a Japanese baseball game? From the intense chants of the crowd to the electrifying music of the cheerleaders, 
It's quite the spectacle. In Japan, 10 out of the 12 teams boast official cheerleaders, known as dance teams, that amplify the atmosphere with their vibrant performances. This dynamic tradition has made its way to the United States, with teams like the Texas Rangers embracing the fun. The Texas Rangers Six Shooter Squad is an all-female interactive team that performs at every home game, featuring around 20 women, with 10 working each game and all 20 joining for the season finale. So let's sit back and enjoy the skill of the Texas Rangers Six Shooters. The year 2002 marked a pivotal moment for the Rangers, not because of a trade or a championship, but because they finally introduced their long-awaited mascot. For years, fans had speculated and whispered about what form this symbol would take, and on a crisp spring day, their curiosity was answered. Striding into the stadium was the Rangers captain, a charming and spirited horse mascot. After every Rangers home win, he takes to the field, a massive flag in hand. With jubilant and abandon, he delights the cheering crowds. And what would a baseball game be without the food? And with the Texas Ranger baseball game, it has to be nachos. Sit back, relax, while I tell you the history of the nacho. So, it's 1943 in a bustling Mexican border town just across the Rio Grande from Eagle Pass, Texas, at the Victory Club, which was a popular spot for visitors from both sides of the border. One day, a group of U.S. military officers' wives, their husbands stationed at nearby Fort Duncan, made the sharp trip into town, eager for a taste of Mexico. As they settled into their seats, the head maitre d', Anasia Ananya, noticed their arrival. The cook was nowhere to be found, and with time ticking in, Ignacio, not one to disappoint, dashed into the kitchen to see what he could whip up. His eyes fell upon a stack of freshly fried corn tortillas, and in a flash of inspiration, he cut the tortillas into triangles, sprinkled them with some shredded cheese, and added a kick of pickled jalapeno peppers. He popped the creation into the oven just long enough for the cheese to melt, then hurried back to the dining room with the hot, savory snack. The women, intrigued by the unfamiliar dish, took a bite. Their faces lit up with delight. When one of them asked Ignacio what it was called, he paused for a moment and then said with a grin, Well, I guess we can just call them Nacho Special. The name stuck, a nod to the common nickname for Ignacio. Nacho. Word of the delicious Nacho Special quickly spread far beyond the Victory Club. It wasn't long before the simple yet flavorful dish made its way across Texas and into the broader Southwest United States. The Nacho's journey didn't stop there. In 1976, Frank Liberto, the enterprising owners of Rico Products, introduced a modified version featuring cheese sauce and pre-made tortilla chips at Texas Rangers baseball games in old Arlington Stadium. This new take on Ignacio's creation was an instant hit with fans, cementing Nacho's place in American culinary culture. From a moment of necessity and creativity in a small Mexican border town, Nachos have become a beloved snack, transcending borders and bringing a taste of Mexico to kitchens and stadiums far and wide. I was too busy clapping to film the Boston Red Sox batting lineup.
Austin and Texas may be separated by a vast difference in many, many ways, but one thing we have in common is our beautiful flag and our national anthem. Bradford's out of Baylor, and he grew up in Alito, Texas. He's a native Texas boy. Bradford began the 2024 season as part of the regular lineup, recording a 3-0 record and a 1.4 ERA across three starts. On April 14, 2024, he was placed on the injured list with back soreness. However, the injury was revealed to be a rib stress fracture, and on April 26, he was transferred to the 60-day injury list on May 23rd. He was activated on July 29th, so this is his first start back with the Rangers. Bradford gave up a first inning home run to Rob Refsnyder. Refsnyder went on to have a career night against the Texas Rangers. Boston's starting pitcher would be Tanner Howe. Tanner is from Illinois and played his college ball at the University of Missouri. There, in 2015, he started 15 games going 8-5 with a 3.49 ERA, where he recorded 91 strikeouts with only 12 walks and just a little over 100 innings. As a sophomore, Hauk started 15 games and went 5-6 and six with a 2.99 ERA and 106 strikeouts. The Sox selected Hauk with their 24th overall pick in the 2017 draft. Tanner made it up to the big leagues in 2020 when he debuted against the Miami Marlins on September 15th. Boston would carry their one-run lead into the fourth inning. In the fourth inning, Ref Snyder would light up Bradford again, driving in a 400-foot home run over center field. Soon after, Wong singled to left, bringing Devers in for a 3-0 Boston lead. 
The Rangers removed Bradford, replacing him with LeCur, who silenced the Red Sox batters. Then it was Texas's turn to go long. Heim drove it 368 feet, bringing in Jung and Duran with him to tie up the score 3 to 3. Listen to those Texas fans roar. Then it was Tavares' turn to light up Hout, driving it 368 feet, scoring the go-ahead run. It is now 3-4 Texas. On that note, I thought it was time that I'd go get a little bit of food. Texas is known for its barbecue. When you're talking Texas barbecue, you're talking beef. With the Metroplex's Asian population is just under 10%, it's only natural that a fusion of cultures would occur. Behold the brisket egg roll. You get two hearty wheat flour skin rolls stuffed with just a little cabbage, a little carrot, and a whole lot of shredded brisket. The fries may be a little overload for any but the heartiest Texas sized appetites, but the two brisket egg rolls are a perfect accompaniment to any baseball game. While I was stuffing my mouth full of that tasty Texas fusion food, the Rangers are putting it to my Red Sox. First, Duran brought in Garcia, then Tavares brought in Duran. Then, to make matters worse, Josh Smith brought in Jonah Hunt, making it 7 to 3. Texas Rangers. Those Texas fans were getting wild, and rightfully so. They were taking it to my Boston Red Sox. And what's a baseball game without a mascot race? Although I'm not too sure those are mascots. I'm not exactly sure who they are, but they're having a good time and that's all that matters. I think the best mascot race is in DC. The Washington Nationals, the racing of the presidents. In Pittsburgh, they race pierogies. In Milwaukee, it's sausages. Leave me a comment let me know who you think has the best mascot races. Anyway, here comes Blue from behind. Knocks Red out of the way. And there's the Sixers and wins. In the seventh inning, Boston would start making a comeback. Raffaella gets on base. He'll be driven in by Ref Snyder, who had an amazing game. Now, with Texas leading 7-4, it's time for the seventh inning stretch. God Bless America was written by Irving Berlin, a Jewish immigrant. Now it's time for that old time classic, Take Me Out to the Ballpark. It all comes down to this, the ninth inning. Texas is up seven to four. All they need to do is get three out. The first batter up gets on base. The Red Sox might have some hope after all. And then, whiff, out one. Next up, number 11. Raphael Devers, my favorite player in all of baseball. Surely this guy can do it, right? He's made contact. It's going, it's going, 
No, it's an L. At number 12, Connor Wong. He's batting 301. This guy can do it. 10 home runs on the year. Foul ball. Strike. Ball in the dirt. Another ball. A swing and a miss. Strike two. It all comes down to this. Two strikes, three balls. Can Connor Wong do it? And the answer is... Not on this day. He's out. Rangers win. Rangers win. The Rangers say hello win column and with tonight's Rangers win and Ranger game. The Rangers seven runs. Thirteen hits. Well, thank you all for watching. It was really a fun game. Remember people, take your kids out to the ballpark. You're doing yourself and them a huge favor. Thank you, Texas Ranger fans. Y'all were great. Texas hospitality is a real thing. To the Boston Red Sox, hey, we're going to have better days. All right, folks, this is your chance to participate in Gulf Coastal Connections. This is your chance to subscribe, like, follow, share, do all the YouTube things. And remember, it's not goodbye. It's see you next Tuesday on Gulf Coastal Connections.